Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let him have dominion over the fish, over the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over the, all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. That word image is associated with how God saw it. Somebody with me? How what? God saw it. Before what? He even created it. Hallelujah. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female. He created them. Then God blessed them. God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. In his image, he saw them. His likeness is associated with dominion and authority. So as God saw this, he saw in his image, in his, what we might call imagination. Because whatever God sees, he can create. Amen? So he saw them, he saw a creation in his image. In the image that he foresaw, he manifested. And in it, he said, okay, now I'm going to create this image of, that's in our likeness. That means in dominion and authority. They will have dominion and authority. And he, and he says this in the scripture, over the sea, over everything, and over a creeping thing. There's a lot of creeping things around there. In Genesis 3 and 13, the image and likeness of God got nullified, got corrupted and contaminated because of their participation with the serpent. The Lord said to the woman, what is this you have done? And the woman said, the serpent deceived me, and I partook, or a ate. So the Lord said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed more than all the cattle, and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go, and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity, hatred, between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. It shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. And to the woman he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your, and your conception. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. Then to Adam he said, Because you have done, heeded the voice of your wife, and have eaten or partaken of the tree of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it. Curses the ground for your sake, and toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life, both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the herb of the field. In sweat of your face you shall eat bread, till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken, for dust you are, and dust you shall return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Also for Adam and his wife, the Lord God made tunics of skin and clothed them. Because they were what? Naked. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become like one of us to know good and evil. And none, and now lest he put his hand out and take of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him out of the Garden of Eden, sent them both out of the Garden of Eden, and to, uh, to till the ground from which he was taken. So he drove out the man and the woman, and he placed cherubim at the east of the Garden of Eden in a flaming sword which turned every way to guard the way of the tree of life. So we, you got to understand here that the, the serpent's attempt because he was removed from the presence of God, was to destroy anything God created. But why was he removed from the presence of God? In Isaiah 14, 12.
So his attempt was to stop the multiplication that God gave to man. His attempt was to stop the dominion. The only way he could do this was to hack into genetic organisms of each of them and to re-engineer uh, life in his image of the serpent and remove it away from God. Does everybody understand that? So his focus was to hack in in the genetic organisms of the woman especially the woman, because she was the one that was going to produce offspring. And re-engineer life in, his, in, in the image of the serpent and remove the likeness of the creator in his image. And Isaiah 14, verse 12. Hallelujah. Let's speak it. Oh, how you have fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds and will be like the most high. Well, that's what... Uh, Got him kicked out. Yet you should, and the Lord's response was, yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, the lowest depths of the pit. Again, the serpent, the dragon, whatever you want to call him, he's got multiple names. His focus was to become like God as a creator. Does everybody get it? to be a creator. He wanted his own race. So when Adam and Eve, when the serpent deceived Eve and they produced offspring, because the serpent's purpose was to create a satanic bloodline all the way down to a certain time when kingdoms would be manifested and they would take rule and control over everything. So you got Cain and Abel that was the offspring. Abel was the righteous one. Cain was the wicked one. So we see here the first bloodline of the serpent was Cain. Does everybody get it? And that followed all the way down. If you find Cain, follow Cain's uh, lineage all the way down, it's all Nephilim, all corrupt, all the way down. In fact... Um, Seth was the bloodline of Christ, which was the only, the only son that Adam had that was in his image. The first one, the first son of Adam. Then when we go to Genesis 6, tonight's teaching is called Satanic Bloodline. Now the Satanic Bloodline runs tremendously all over the world. Now, there are certain bloodlines that they call the 13 satanic bloodlines. There are certain families and so forth that run everything. But then there's multiple bloodlines. And some of these bloodlines of the satanic, they're fighting one another also. In verse 1, now, let's speak it together. Now, it came to pass when men began to multiply in the face of the earth, and the daughters were born to them, that the sons of God, these angels, saw the daughters of men, that they, took that they were beautiful, and they took wives, not one, but many, for themselves of all whom they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he indeed is flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. There were giants on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bore children to them. Those were mighty men who were of old and men of renown. Now again, it says there were giants on the earth in those days. Well, where did those giants come from? Cain. Amen? First bloodline. And then when the other angels, according to Enoch, 200 angels, fallen angels came in, put on flesh, and took, on, took wives. And they began to produce offsprings we call Nephilims. 
In verse 5, then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil consistently or continuously. And the Lord was sorry that he made man on earth. And he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing, and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God. And Noah begot three sons, Shem, Han, and Japheth. So once the flood was destroyed, once the flood destroyed all of these Nephilims and so forth, and Noah went into the boat, and his family was rescued and saved. And then when they, after so many days, and they, uh, the water subsided, and Noah came out of the boat, and him and his family and, and his children. But then we see that the giants started all over again, and that's because if you follow Ham's lineage, in fact, he was the one that had a homosexual act with his father Noah while Noah was sleeping and drunk. Where did he get that perversion from? Because he intermixed and married into a Nephilim race. One of his, his wife was, off, was an offspring of one of the Nephilims. So they intermix. This is associated in the area. You know, there's, when there's intermixing, when people have sex, they intermix. When, I be, uh, when they have intercourse, they intermix. And, and all the curses that you have sex with someone, those are all on you. Everyone, every person you've ever slept with in your life, every one of their curses of their ancestral families is on you now, which must be broke. Somebody get it? And so, you know, you got to understand, I don't think Ham knew about that stuff. So he was intermixed, spiritually intermixed. And then they produced offsprings then. And you find the lineage of Ham. All Nephilim race, all corrupt, all another bloodline. And it continues on. If you, if you follow up many of these presidents, in fact, almost all of them, they go back to the Nephilim race. Every single one of them. One way or another, they're connected. Even the Kennedys were connected. But many people have escaped. And got born again. And even when John F. Kennedy got, tried to expose the Nephilim race by calling them a secret society, he was killed. And many of them have been killed every time they try to expose it. Because the bloodline of Satan's kingdom, the satanic bloodline, runs tremendously. These fallen angels interbred with human. There was a genetic mixing uh, celestial or terrestrial. We call that transhumanization. It's called what? Transhumanization. Now let me share something with you. Nothing has changed through the years. As governments come and go, the bloodline and, and the Luciferian agenda simply just adjusts the society and continue toward the end goal. Nothing's changed. And they use deception and fear. And they bring about an oppressive rule. I mean, you can see it happening all over right now. It's all coming to the surface, isn't it? We have an ancient serpent seed with modern faces these days. It's the ancient serpent seed with modern faces. These bloodlines have become more openly bold and are confident in their plan. In their plan. <laughs> and they're at a point of no return and they believe that it's going to work no matter what they do. In Revelation chapter 2, verse 8. Let's speak it into the angel of the church of Samaria. Right. These things says the first and the last who was dead and came to life. I know your works, tribulation and poverty, but you are rich. And I know the blasphemy of those who say that they are Jews and are not, but out of the synagogue of Satan. Hello. What does that mean? Satanic bloodline. Does everybody get it? Claiming that they're Jews, but they're really not. They're the synagogue of Satan. That's why Israel will be the last nation to be judged. 
Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison, that you may be tested, and you will have tribulation ten days. Be faithful until death, and I will give you the crown of life. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. So again, we see these fake Jews, synagogue of Satan, all related to satanic bloodline. Again, many have escaped and become born again. So when you see the area of Pharaoh and, and all the Egyptian and the Babylonian and you've got Nimrod, all of these are associated with the satanic bloodline. And again, their offsprings have continued over and over and over, and we still have satanic bloodline. That's what they're all getting ready. That's why they're gathering together. That's why it's happening right now. They're trying to bring in the Antichrist, which is going to come out of the fourth kingdom. And we'll talk a little bit about that tonight. Hallelujah. Now think about this. So you got Pharaoh, you got uh, many religions, you've got, you know, listen, Constantine brought in the arena of the Pope. Now people don't realize that uh, Catholicism, there are many good people that are deceived. Amen? Thank God God judges by the heart. But when you really think about it, they call the Pope Holy Father. God says don't call nobody Holy Father. And so they exalt this man as God. But he ain't God. Amen? And so and when you think about this also, in the, when the United States became the world currency, they put in it, in God we trust, but it isn't our God. Who's the ruler of this world? Satan. That's who their God is. Because in Latin, it says one world order on the money. Amen? And again, that's their focus, is to bring in the kingdom, to bring the uh, anti, uh, anti-Christ, and they rule the whole earth completely. Amen? Hallelujah. <clears throat> think about Nimrod, the Masons. Think about Esau who sold his birthright. All of these here ended up into satanic bloodlines. And Daniel 7. Now, you know, when we were speaking about the serpent was more cunning than any beast. Beasts are associated with fallen angels. They're also associated now with kingdoms and kings under control of the fallen angels. Or they hold a position of that. In verse 1, in the first year of Belazar, king of what? Babylon. Now where did the word Babylon come from? It came from the word Babel, right? Nimrod. Daniel had a dream. And visions of his of his head while on his bed. Then he wrote down the dream telling the main facts. <clears throat> Daniel spoke, saying, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, four winds of heaven were striving, were stirring up in this great sea. <clears throat> and four great beasts came out up from the sea, each different from the other. The first was like a lion had eagle's wings. I watched till its wings were plucked off and it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand on two feet like a man. And a man's heart was given to it. And suddenly another beast, a second like a bear, was raised up on one side and had three ribs in its mouth between its teeth. And they said thus to it, Arise, devour much flesh. After this I looked and there was another like a leopard which had a, on its back four wings of a bird. The beast also had four heads and dominion was given to it. After this I saw the night visions and behold a fourth beast 
dreadful and terrible, exceedingly strong. It had huge iron teeth. It was devouring and breaking in pieces and trampling the residue with its teeth. It was different from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. I was considering the horns, and there was an, another horn, a little one, <clears throat> coming up from among them, before whom three of the first horns were plucked out by the roots. And there, in this horn, were eyes like there were eyes like the eyes of a man and a mouth speaking what? Pompous words. Who do you think that was? The Antichrist. I watched till the thrones were put in place. And the Ancient of Days was seated. His garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne was fiery flame, its wheels a burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him, and thousands of thousands ministered to him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated, and the books were open. I watched. Then because of the sound of the pompous words which the horn was speaking, I watched till the beast was slain and its body destroyed and given to the burning flame. So we know these are things that are going to come. As for the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time, which is a year and a half. I was watching in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man coming with the clouds of heaven. He came to the Ancient of Days. And they brought, brought him near before him. Then to him was given dominion and glory of the kingdom, that all the peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom, the one which shall not be destroyed. And I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit within my body, and, and the visions of my head troubled me. I came near to one of those who stood by and, and asked him the truth of all this. So he told me and made known to me the interpretation of these things. Thus great beasts, those great beasts which are four, are four kings which arise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High shall receive the kingdom of, and possess the kingdom forever and ever and ever. Then I wish to know the truth about the fourth beast which was different from all the others, exceedingly dreadful with its teeth of iron and its nails of bronze, which devoured broken pieces and trampled the rest to with its feet, and the ten horns that were on its head, and other horn which came up, before which three fell, namely that the horn which had eyes and the mouth which spoke pompous words, whose appearance was greater than its fellows. I was watching, and the same horn was making war against the saints and prevailing against them until the Ancient of Days came and judgment was made in the favor of the saints of the Most High. And the time came for the saints to possess the kingdom. Now we know we haven't gotten there yet. Amen? We're on the way. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the what? Fourth kingdom on the earth. We shall be different from all the other kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth, trample it and break it in pieces. The ten horns are ten kings who shall arise from the kingdom, and another shall rise after them. He shall be different from the first ones, and shall subdue three kings. He shall speak pompous words against the Most High, shall persecute the saints of the Most High, and shall intend to change times and laws. Then the saints shall be given into his hand, for a time and times and a half, that means three and a half years. But the court shall be seated, and they shall take away his dominion and consume and destroy it forever. Then the kingdom and dominion, the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole earth, shall be given to the people, the saints of the Most High. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominion shall serve and obey him. This is the end of the account for me, Daniel, my thoughts greatly troubled me, and my countenance changed, but I kept the matter in my heart. So we see here the rising of the fourth kingdom and the Antichrist, known as the son of perdition, 
will take control for three and a half years. We will not be here. Hello. This will be right after. This is known as the Great Tribulation. But you got to remember, they're all focusing right now. All the bloodlines are focusing and bringing in the Antichrist and setting up the fourth kingdom. In Revelation 13, starting at verse 1. You know, you, you can go back and you can go back and review these things because you're not going to feel. Sometimes you can't figure this all out at one time. Amen. In Revelation 13, verse one, then I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns, and on his heads a blasphemous name. Now you're going to find it. This is going to parallel with Daniel, but you're talking. This is years afterwards now. Amen? This is why uh, John the Revelator was on the Patmos on the island. He was getting this revelation. But Daniel already spoke about it beforehand. So things are a little bit different, but they're in a parallel. They still connect to one another. Verse 2. Now the beast which I saw was a leopard. His feet were like the feet of a bear. His mouth was like the mouth of a lion. The dragon gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as if it had been mortally wounded. And his deadly wound was healed. And all the world marveled and followed the beast. You got to remember, they're always going to try to imitate Christ. Amen. So something may happen to this one individual, somehow, whatever, was wounded, amen, and is going to be resurrected. Hallelujah. And the world marveled and followed the beast. That's what they do when they don't know Jesus, amen. So they worship the dragon who gave authority to the beast. And remember, the Lord said that I'm going to I'm going to allow authority to be given to them for three and a half years. So they're going to be able to do whatever they want to do. They're going to deceive many people. And it says that they worship the beast, saying, "Who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him?" And he was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. He was given authority to continue for forty-two months, three and a half years. Then he opened his mouth and blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and those who dwell in heaven. Where will you and I be? In heaven. It was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. Now where will these saints be? These are the ones that are going to accept Jesus Christ after you and I leave. How many people are going to get a good awakening after the body of Christ is removed? Many. And all who dwell on the earth will worship him, whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb, and slain from the foundation of the world. If anyone has an ear, let him hear. He who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He who kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience of the faith of the saints. Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. And he exercises all authority of the first beast in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And we heard this already. He performs great signs so that even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. He deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. He causes all both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their forehead. And that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark of the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is the wisdom, let him who understands calculate the number of the beast, 
for it is the number of a man, his number is 666. Again, we see there was a granted authority for another three and a half years. This is known as great tribulation. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, in verse 1, Let's speak it now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means, for the day will not come unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed to what? Son of perdition who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So we know he's known as the son of perdition. And in this, he will expose himself. He will tell everybody he's God. Many of the Jews are going to really freak out about that. But many of them have already been taken captive. Many people of the world already are worshiping the beast. It's just a, this is where the satanic kingdom, the bloodline of the uh, uh, satanic bloodline is being manifested and they're all coming together now and destroying the earth as much as possible. Destroying humanity as much as possible. Killing off all offspring. In Revelation 17, Remember, their focus is to establish the fourth kingdom. Verse 1. Let's speak it. The one of the seven angels who had seven bowls came and talked with me, saying to me, Come, I will show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters, with whom the kings of the earth committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he... So he carried me away in the spirit in the wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast, which was full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet, and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, having her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the filthiness of her fornication. And on her forehead a name was written, Mystery Babylon, the great mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of saints and with the blood of martyrs of Jesus. When I saw her, I marveled with great amazement. But the angel said to me, Why do you marvel? I will tell you the mystery of the woman and the beast that carries her, which has the seven heads and the ten horns, just like what we've been reading in Daniel. The beast that you saw was, it was, and is not, and will ascend out of the bottomless pit and go to where? Perdition. This will be the spirit. We got to remember something. This is the spirit that's going to possess the Antichrist. It's going to come out of the bottomless pit and enter a person that's already been set and ready to go, and he already knows his position. It's not going to be someone just goes, oh. I got the Antichrist. No. <laughs> They've already groomed him. And those who dwell on the earth so marvel, whose names are not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they see the beast, beast that was and is not and yet is. Why? Because anyone that was here that is written in the book of life is going to know what the heck's going on. Here's a mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits. Now, these seven mountains is associated also with a location and other kingdoms. <clears throat> the beast, um, there are also kings. Five have fallen. One is and the other has not yet come. And when he comes, he must continue a short time. The beast that was and is not is himself also the eighth and is of the seven and is going to where? Perdition. Then the ten horns which you saw are ten kings who have received no kingdom as of yet. 
but they receive authority for one hour as kings with the beasts. Remember, they're gathering together. They're going to unite and destroy as much as they can. These are, the, these are one mind, and they will give their power and authority to the beast. These will make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb will overcome them. For he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and those who are with him are called, chosen, and faithful. Oh, yeah. Then he said to me, the waters which you saw, where the harlot sits, are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. And the ten horns which you saw on the beast, these will hate the harlot, make her desolate, and naked, eat her flesh and burn her with fire. Again, they will begin to consume each other. For God has put it in their hearts to fulfill his, his purpose, to be of one mind and to give their kingdom to the beast until the words of God are fulfilled. And the woman whom you saw is that great city which reigns over the kings of the earth. Now, I truly believe that this harlot and the mother of harlots is associated with Rome in the Vatican because of all the perverse and all the child abuse and all the blood and, and the Vatican is used as a money laundering operation to feed all of the bloodlines it's a, uh, from, all over, from all over the world they're the ones that distribute all the money and you got to remember what did they cause? They caused a worship to a man and they caused a worship to a woman which is an abomination. Amen? Babylon, the mother of harlots, where the false prophet will come also. The spirit that will possess the Antichrist will come from the bottomless pit. In Daniel 12. Daniel 12 and verse uh, 1. And at that time, Michael who's the uh, archangel, shall stand up, the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people, Israel. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was seen there was a nation. Even so to that time. And at that time your people shall be delivered. Everyone who is found written in the book. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall wake. Some to everlasting life some to shame and everlasting contempt. And those who are wise shall shine in the brightness of the firmament. And those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro and knowledge will increase. In other words, to interpret everything that's happening now. Now you have artificial intelligence. You got all kinds of knowledge that's increasing. Now they can actually computerize certain things in the, the Bible. It's called the, the Bible code. There's a lot of things that they can now calculate through technology. And there's a lot more understanding now. In verse 5, Then I, Daniel, looked, and there stood two others, one on this river bank and the other on the other river bank. And one said to the man clothed in linen, who was above the waters of the river, how long shall the fulfillment of these wonders be? Then I heard the man clothed in linen, who was above the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand to heaven, and swore by him who lives forever that it shall be for a time, times, and half times, which is three and a half years. And when the power of the holy people have been completely shattered, all things will be finished. What is the power of the holy people? In other words, he's talking about Israel. Although I heard I did not understand then, I said, my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, go your way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed time till the uh, time of the end. Then they shall be purified, made white, refined, but the wicked shall be wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but rise but the wise will understand. And from that time, the daily sacrifice is taken away and the abomination of desolation is set up. There should be 1,290 days. Blessed is he who waits and comes to the 1,300 and 
uh, 35 days. But you, Daniel, go your way to the end and you shall rest and will rise to your inheritance at the end of the days. <clears throat> Again, we see here the area of the tribulation time, the building of the fourth kingdom, the exposure of all the wickedness and the unifying of all bloodlines, the satanic bloodlines. In Matthew 24, verse 3, remember everything's about getting the fourth kingdom established and that's what they're doing right now. Now, as Jesus said on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us when these things will be. What will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, that is ethnic group, and the kingdom against kingdoms. And there will be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in various places. And all these that are beginning of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and will kill you. You will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended and will betray one another and will hate one another. The many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the na world and the witnesses of, to all nations. And then the end will come. Therefore, when you see the what? Abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet, which we just read, standing in the holy place. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him who is on the housetop not go down to take anything out of his house. And let him who was in the field go back, not go back to get his clothes. But woe to those who are pregnant and those who are nursing babes in those days. And pray that your flight may not be in the winter or on the Sabbath. For then there will be what? Great tribulation. Such as not been seen the beginning of the world until this time. No, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. For for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. Then if anyone says to you, look here or there, do not believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. See, I have told you beforehand. Therefore, if they say to you, look, he is in the desert, do not go out. Or look, he is in the inner rooms, do not believe. Hmm. For as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For every, for, for wherever the carcass is, there the eagles will be gathered together. Immediately after great tribulation, or after tribulation, I'm sorry, not great tribulation. Immediately after tribulation, of those days the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven will be shaken. And the sign of the Son of God will appear in heaven. And then all the tribes of the earth will mourn. They will see the Son of Man coming into the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they will gather together his elect from the four winds and from the end of the earth. What is this? This is the rapture. Everybody got it. It says after tribulation. Amen? Not great tribulation. Because great tribulation is the establishment of the fourth kingdom and the Antichrist is now ruling. Remember the Lord said that when the, we will be rescued, we are not accounted for the wrath of God. And the wrath of God is in great tribulation. And he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. It's a feast of trumpets. And they will gather together as elect from the four winds and from the one end of heaven to the other. Now learn this parable from the fig tree when its branches already become tender and puts forth leaves. You know that summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, know 
that it's near at the door. Also, I say to you, this generation by no means pass away until all these things take place. Now, we know that Israel was established in 1948, and he's talking about a generation. Well, generations of around 80 years, something to that degree. So we know in that time of generation, now we know if th things are, God can change anything he wants. Amen. But we know our, we are that generation. We are of that generation of the Lord's return. We are that generation to see the Antichrist take possession. We are that generation to see the son of perdition. We are that generation is going to see the desolation of abomination. And we are that generation that will see the Antichrist step into the temple. And then we're out of here. Hallelujah. And I want to close at Romans 1. You know, think about Rome, <laughs> Caesar, Alexander the Great, Napoleon. All these guys were of the satanic bloodline. And you follow them all the way back. It's amazing. We could have a chart that would last forever <laughs> trying to figure this all out with all these bloodlines. And all these people, the Bushes, the Clintons, the Obamas, they're all, they all go back, every one of them. Hallelujah. And now, now think about this. Here's Paul writing the letter in Rome, to the church in Rome, where so much stuff is going on. And in verse 18, what does he say? Romans 1. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Now, where's the Vatican? It's in Rome. Hello. The archives that were in the Vatican, you got to remember when Constantine started and, and started the pomp of the uh, popes and stuff, and united and think about uh, and how the Bible was then translated I mean we know that Enoch wasn't put in there if you read a, a Catholicism Bible compared to a New King James Bible they're different they got the Maccabees they got other things in there and so forth and but the one thing that all of them have been removed was the book of Enoch and Enoch explains everything. It might have been too big to put in there. I don't know. But here's a, a man that walked with God for what? 300 years? Walked with God. for Saw it all. Saw all the Nephilims. They came to him and asked him to pray for help. <laughs> Enoch. I'm sure he had a lot to say. Amen. And he says here, the wrath of God is coming from heaven to those who press the truth. Because what may be known of God is manifested in them. For God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power in Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful but became futile in their thoughts and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshiped and served creature rather than the Creator who is blessed forever. For this reason God gave them up to vile passions. For even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise also men leaving the nature use, natural use of the woman burn in their lust for one another. Men with men committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due. Again, you have transgender, you have homosexual, you got lesbian, you got all of these things. 
It's just a demon using a person. That's all it is. A demon using a person. And now look at what's happening now. I mean, they're, the, the transhuman humanism is expanding all the way into kindergarten. Thank God we have a governor that's standing up for all this stuff and throwing it out. He's throwing it out of all of our education in Florida. Florida's a very blessed state who stands up for what the truth is. Amen? And even though they did not like to retain God, verse 28, in their knowledge, God gave them over to the base mind to do those things which are not fitting. Being filled with all un unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil mindedness. They are whispers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of er evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God. Do they know the righteous judgment of God? Yes, they do, but they refuse to accept it. They have accepted and sold their souls out to the satanic realm and for wealth and power knowing the righteous judgment of God that those who practice such things are deserving of death not only do the same but also what approve of those who practice them that's incredible to me in other words individuals that voted for them and put them in office transhumanism Leaving the original human function of sexual intercourse and true love of God. They perverted it all. Men with men, women with women, some with animals. Sometimes I wonder how that's how the dinosaurs got here. Think about it. You know. But we are at a time and season right now where they're trying to establish the fourth kingdom and bring in the Antichrist. And you and I know it. We must be prepared for it and must battle against it. Even though we know it's coming, we're not going to allow it to happen. Not on our watch. Amen. We're going to fight and drive out. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word and revelation. We ask you to bring this all into understanding and in, in, interpretation by your spirit so that we may see that we may hear and that we may obey and know your time in Jesus name everybody said amen